In this video, I'm going to discuss the square root property for solving quadratic equations. Stated here, if you have a quantity like z squared equals a positive number, then that quantity must be equal to the square root of d or the negative square root of d. All right, so if you square the square root, you get what's inside the radical. If you square the negative square root, you square the negative, it becomes positive. You square the square root, and it be, gives you what's underneath the radical. What's important here is to look at the overall form of your equation. It says something squared equals a positive number. If that's the case, then you have two solutions, a positive and a negative one. Okay, so we can, we can cast that square root property. All right, just kind of using a box here. Something squared equals a positive number, and then you get two solutions from that. Whatever you're squaring must equal either the positive or the negative square root of that positive number d. Okay, now that could be a complicated expression, and we're going to see later when we talk about completing the square to solve quadratic equations that sometimes that is a relatively more complicated expression than just x. But to start out with, let's look at this simple equation, x squared equals 5. Graphically speaking, we can view the left-hand side as the graph of an equation y equals x squared. Likewise, the right-hand side, y equals 5, that's a horizontal line, where the horizontal line at height 5 intersects the parabola, y equals x squared, the y values, the y components of those points of intersections are the same, and therefore the x components are the same. And therefore, if we scroll down to the x-axis, you see those two solutions. So you have two points of intersection on your graph that gives you the two solutions, and those are from the square root property. You see you get the positive and negative square root of 5 between 2 and 3, between negative 2 and negative 3. Okay, now let's apply the square root property algebraically to solve these equations below. All right, so for the first one, we've got x squared minus 144 equals 0. Different than solving quadratic equations by factoring, you actually want to isolate the expression that's being squared. Okay, so we add 144 to each side, and now we're going to think about taking the square root of both sides, or applying the square root property. Again, we got something squared equals a positive number. The only possibilities for that something can be the positive or the negative square root of the number on the right. So in our case, we're going to get that x is the square root of 144, or the negative square root of 144. Okay, and for that, we know that 144 is a perfect square. It's so the square root of 144 is 12, so we're going to get two solutions here. x is equal positive 12, or x is equal negative 12. Okay, we can write that in the more compact form, x equals plus or minus 12. Again, that indicates two solutions, though. Don't forget that. For the next equation, we've got 3x squared minus 1 equals 47. Again, we want to isolate the x squared term. We want to isolate the term that's being squared. Right? We don't want to put 0 on one side when we're trying to use the square root method. So we're going to add 1 to both sides. And then we're going to divide by 3 to break up the multiplication before we take the square root to isolate the expression that's being squared. All right, so divide by 3, and we get x squared is 16. And therefore, we get our two solutions, plus or minus the square root of 16. Or we can write that as plus or minus 4. Okay. Right, it's a little different approach when you're using the square root method than when you're solving by factoring. Right, solving by factoring, we want to put 0 on one side, everything else on the other. Here we want to isolate the term being squared, then apply the square root property to make our conclusion. Uh, I'll clear this off, and we'll do the last two examples. These ones are slightly more complex, but again, you want to look at the overall form. It's some quantity being squared equals a positive number. In this case, it's a not just x, it's a polynomial. It's x minus 3, which is being squared, and then that's equal 36. Nonetheless, whatever is being squared, all right, the conclusion is going to be from the square root property that something has got to be plus or minus the square root of 36, which is plus or minus 6. What we're squaring this time is the polynomial x minus 3. So we conclude x minus 3 is equal to positive 6, or x minus 3 is equal to negative 6. And then we solve those resulting linear equations to get x equals 3, or to get x equals 9, excuse me, by adding 3 to both sides, or 
x is equal to negative 3. Two solutions. Okay, we're typically going to get two solutions. We could have at most two solutions to a quadratic equation, or we could have one, or we can even have zero. Sometimes there are no solutions to a quadratic equation, no real number solutions. All right, for the last one, again, it fits our overall mold. We've got something squared equaling a positive number. Take the square root of both sides to conclude that whatever that something is has got to equal either the positive square root of 5 or the negative square root of 5 and then we isolate x. So now we're going to set x plus 1 equal to plus or minus the square root of 5 and then solving for x we're just going to subtract 1 from both sides. So we get that x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 5. And again that indicates for you two solutions. Don't forget that. It means x could be the negative 1 plus the square root of 5 or x could equal negative 1 minus the square root of 5. And this is a typical situation you're going to be in. Your general quadratic is not going to have necessarily nice, easy, integer valued solutions. You might end up with square roots as part of your answers. All right, so we've got two solutions, two distinct real numbered solutions. They are not simple. Right, you're not going to guess that those are the answers to that equation, All right, but you can double check that they work. And you can approximate them with decimals. So we can, if we want to round it to say five decimal places, we get 1.23607. And uh, separately, for the second solution, it's negative 3.23607, rounded to five decimal places. Remember, those are just rounded solutions. Those are not the exact answer. Whenever we're using a calculator to approximate a square root, we are implicitly there making an error. The exact solution involves a square root. If we want to round to a certain decimal place, we can't.